Hey everyone, it's Fox from ModelMakingGuru.com here and welcome back to part 12 of our build of the 160th scale no grade Strike Gundam. This was supposed to be a quick build and paint job so I can get this thing sold. It's kind of not turning out that way because I do get carried away with all my little techniques. So it's turned into a full skill level 4, skill level 5 paint job this. Oh well, never mind, not to worry, you get... You get more episodes and I get an excellent model at the end of it, so somebody gets to buy a really sweet uh, Gundam. Right, what are we up to today? Uh, all the gloss varnish is dried, all the chipping has been done, everything else has been sorted. Uh, gloss varnish has had 24 hours to dry, so we can crack on with the next steps in the weathering. Today we are going to focus, I think, and then, as you know me, this could change radically at any moment. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the first load of uh, weathering using enamel products. Uh, and we're going to start with pin washes. Now, if you don't know what a pin wash is, uh, a pin wash is basically taking um, recessed details like panel lines, like these here, uh, or that one there, with the hexagon, uh, and using thinned paint to fill those, uh, to make them stand out a bit, make them dark, and not necessarily make them black, and we're going to show different colours, but just to make them more realistic. These are, if this was a real thing, that would be a, a gap between two separate panels, so with these they'd naturally fill with dust and dirt and debris and you'd get uh, a darker line there and it also helps bring it out and this is applicable to any kind of model not just Gumpler this is applicable to you know tanks cars planes anything if you want to make those details pop and stand out you need to fill them so uh, what we're going to be using are enamels now what we're going to be look to be doing uh, is basically filling recesses filling things like vents uh, and also uh, panel lines so that's the piece I've just shown you this is one I've already done. Here's one I made earlier. You can see here it's got the same panel lines. It's got the panel line here, which has been uh, pin washed. And it's got the little thing around that nut shape. That's been pin washed. And you can just see it has, gives, has a bit more relief. It has a bit more definition and it stands out. And it just makes it look a bit more convincing and a bit more realistic. Now, this kit itself, there ain't quite a load of... Uh, panel lines on this kit it's a bit pants in that there's not many panel lines but there are vents and things like that and there are edges that we want to emphasize so you can also use pin washes uh, for non recessed details and like if you see on here on the inside of the side skirts we have a recessed detail here with this little slit that's just been pin washed in and cleaned up but we also have this detail on the back uh, there are some recessed panel lines but there's also these edges and these are just raised bits of frame uh, and we've used the pin wash to collect around the edges and cleaned it up and I'll show you the cleanup process is dead simple uh, so you can use it to highlight edges uh, you can also use it uh, to brilliant effect to do things like the vents on the mask and vents on the side uh, the vents on the mask were just small recessed detail literally just put some pin wash in there let it dry clean it up uh, and the vents on the side these were all molded in one piece this was literally two sides of the head front and back uh, there were no inserts for the vents on the side here. It's a high grade, remember, technically. So these were all just white. Instead of masking this all off and painting it grey and doing all kind of funky stuff, all I've done is left it white, gone in with a pin wash and a brush, slapped it on, let it dry and cleaned it up. It took me all of two minutes. Uh, the result is you get a nice colour separation. You get the vents looking deep and dark, uh, but the rest of the surrounding... Uh, plating an area of the face is white and it just looks more realistic and I went behind the uh, the cannons as well the Vulcans in the head I've got to paint those they're still white but they're going to be painted a metallic color uh, and I also put a little bit of uh, a dark pin wash on the camera just between the two lenses might not come out on camera uh, but it just gives a bit of a dark coloring because it's matte it stands out there'll be more gloss to go on there so don't worry too much one other thing you can use it for as well is vents like on the side there but here's a more extreme version uh, these vents on the rear skirts, they were just white. Uh, I've used a pin wash to go in there, get into all the little vents. It collects at the back and around the edges so it makes it look dark inside. But because it's a thinned paint, it doesn't stay on the vents and the slats in the vent. So it fades away from there and they remain kind of bright coloured. And it looks nice and, and used. We can go back with the dry brush later and pick out those vent edges if we need to make them stand out again but that looks i'm quite happy with that it looks nice and dusty and dirty like an air conditioning vent or something like that like you might get on the side of an office building so quite cool with that so what are we going to use well let me get the products we are going to use uh, in this case i'm going to be using some of the ammo by mig uh 
panel line washes. However, you don't have to use these. We can use uh, any thinned enamel or oil paint will do, to be honest. Uh, these are enamel. Let's have a look. What was the one we used? Uh, Black Knight. And we used dark green grey. Okay, so I've used three so far. Okay. Right, so I've used three. I've used panel line wash deep grey, which is a MIG 1602. Uh, I've used panel line wash black knight, which is a MIG 1611. And I've used panel line wash dark green grey, which is a MIG 1608. Um, these are specific panel line washes, but you can use them for a lot of different things. But they're basically just thinned enamel paint. That's the idea. Uh, now you can use, you don't have to use these, you can use normal enamel paints, just thin it down to almost water. Um, or you can use oil paints, same principle, just put, get some thinner, put some oil paint in the thinner till you've got the consistency of say water or very thin milk. Uh, and that will work absolutely fine. The reason you want to use enamels, or if you prefer oil paints, and never acrylics, uh, is basically because these take a long time to dry. Similar to a gunk wash, if you put this on, uh, it's dried to the touch within, say, half an hour, an hour, something like that. But it doesn't fully dry for around 24 hours. So the beauty of these is that once it's on there and dry to the touch, you can go in with a cotton bud and just wipe off the excess. And we'll sh I'll show you that. I'll do a little bit of a blob here and there, and we'll just wipe it off. So we're going to be using these three. The reason I'm using three different colours, handy little tip, if you've got a different multicoloured kit like this one, let me bring these back in again and change all the lighting and... Do you know, it's such a faff sometimes. Uh, right, so if you've got different colours, uh, you could just use black. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you do a black panel line wash on a white part, it's going to just look like you've gone in with a Gundam marker. It's going to look really obvious. You want the panel line to look realistic and not like you've painted it on. So what I tend to do is, uh, the deep grey is quite a nice browny colour, as you can see from, from the pot. Uh, and that works well with white. It just looks like dirt and grime and grease. It doesn't show up on reds or blues. So for things like blues, I have gone in with, and it's hard to see, but I've gone in with the black panel line wash. And it's kind of around the edges. You can't really see. Even the black doesn't stand up very well. And these little nicks here, it's put in there. Um, doesn't stand out very well, but it's better than this one, which you wouldn't see. And the, uh, the green grey, which is that kind of sort of manky dark green, You've just pulled something out of the gutter and made out the gutter on your roof and it's fallen into a bucket of water colour. It's really divine colour. I found that really good for doing in vents and things. I use those on the vents on the side of the head. Just because it's not black and it's not grey, it's just a nice dark, greeny dark sort of colour that just looks great. I like it. It just makes some variation. So you can just use one colour. You don't need to buy millions of different colours. There's lots and lots of different colours in the ammo of MIG range. There's also lots of other companies that do panel line washes. To me, I do some in enamel. I think Vallejo do some, uh, but I've used the MIG ones and they're really great. Um, and it's just to go with the colours that work. But you want to try and get a darker colour than the one you're putting the panel line on. So darker than red and darker than white, but not so dark it's obvious. Uh, I've used black on red because I tried the, there is a red brown colour of panel line wash that I had, but it just didn't show up on this. So I've used black on here. Or I will be using black on here to make it stand out. So... Let me stop waffling. Uh, I'll go and get everything ready and I will show you how to do a pin wash. It is super easy. What you will need is, before we go ahead, uh, a couple of things. You'll need a brush. It doesn't have to be a fine brush. It just means you've got less cleanup. Again, this is my artificer. We're not quite artificing at this point. Um, two lots of thinner. I've got one that's going to be clean thinner and one that's going to be brush stuff to clean my brush off with. Uh, and I'll explain that. Uh, for thinner, I'm using um, normal artist low odour thinners. It's basically low odour sort of terpenoids. They're designed for oil paint, but they work just as fine on enamels. You can use enamel thinners. Some people use lighter fluid. Um, but basically, it's just go for, you know, some people use white spirits and turpentine, but they stink. So just use, go to your artist shop, just get any low odour oil paint thinners. They'll be absolutely fine for enamels and they don't stink. Uh, you need some cotton buds. <laughs> And a couple of bits of tissue, and that's all you need. Oh, and something to something to stir your paint with as well. So let me go and get ready, and we shall do a panel line wash. It will take about half the time it's taken me to explain it. Back in a moment. Okay, so let's get cracking. We're going to use the panel line wash deep grey on this white part, 
and I'll show you how easy this is. Now, handy tip, you'll notice I'm back on the scruffy cutting mat today. Yes, because this stuff is right messy, as you can tell by the state of the pot. It's a bit messy. Uh, and it does go everywhere. I would normally wear gloves, but because I'm doing so, so few little bits today, it's not such a problem. First thing you want to do is give this stuff a jolly good stir. 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 There's no H in stir. Uh, now you can just shake it, but what you'll find is if you shake it vigorously, it'll mix everything, but you'll get billions of bubbles. Billions and billions of bubbles all over the top, and it'll be like you don't know if you get any on the bush. So just get something to stir it with, cocktail stick or something at all. Uh, some of you have asked about what I'm, my stirry sticks. They are just, literally I went to the pound shop, uh, and I bought some clay sculpting tools for a pound, strangely enough. And it's loads of these little things. Little spatula things and blady things and some of them are great as little stirrers so i use it as my stirrer now okay so that is stirred keep it on the tissue because this stuff will go everywhere uh, and if you are doing an, a large number of pieces do wear gloves because you'll get it on your fingers i've got it on my fingers already let me just wipe that off uh, it does go everywhere and you'll end up just transferring it all over the model and it's not a problem it's just a pain to have to clean it up so what do we do well what we do is we do 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 what well, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Dead easy. Get yourself some of the panel line wash on the brush without knocking the camera. And don't worry if you put too much on, it's not a problem. Literally, because you put the gloss varnish on, you've now got a smooth surface. So all you do, surface even, is just literally touch it to the panel line. And it may or may not flow along the panel line. For some reason, I've had right problems getting this stuff to flow today. So it may not, but don't worry, just touch it to the panel line, and just keep dabbing it, dragging it along. Don't worry if you go outside the line. If you want a darker colour, because it will fade as it dries, the, 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 the carrier fluids will evaporate away and the powder will, the pigment will stay, just put more in. If you overload the brush massively, brush massively, if I can put my teeth in, then you will actually find it flows along panel lines much easier. But obviously you're just giving yourself a bit more clean up then. A little bit there, put it on the edge, and now for this little nut bit, I'm going to move this panel line wash because I'm going to knock it over. Uh, for the little nut bit, dead easy, just touch it to the uh, to the panel line. Ready? Look at that! How easy was that? That's done. It's done now. That's it. So we're going to put that to one side. Uh, you will need to leave this for about, to be safe, I'd say about an hour. Half an hour to an hour. Uh, now I add two things of thinner. This is clean for clean up later, so I'm going to put it to one side. This is just my brush wash. Again, this is just Obelus. Obelus? God, I'm talking nonsense. Jesus Christ, what am I talking about today? <sighs> right, words, words, calm, calm. So I'll just clean my brush off. Now if you had the red piece, and I will change the white balance, and it's going to break the camera again. And just nuclear explosion. Wow, that's pretty, I'm going to have to move this tissue out of the way because it's just exploding. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Let's try that again, shall we? Do it on the red bit and not on a black bit. It's probably a good idea. Wow, that made no difference at all. Okay, so everything's a bit overexposed, but at least you can see what I'm doing. Now, this is a red piece, like I said, so we don't want to use the, green, the, the deep grey because you just won't see it. Unless that's what you want. So we're going to use Black Knight. Not like the mysterious satellite around Earth that all the conspiracy theorists go on about. It's quite an interesting conspiracy theory, but it's apparently complete nonsense. But then again, maybe that's what they want you to think. I'm just going to clean off my stirrer in the brush cleaning thinner. Because I don't want to put any of the grey colour into the black. And then we're just going to do the same again. Give this a jolly good stir. Stirring, stirring, stirring. Roha! Oh, sorry, copyright. Shh. There we go. By the way, a few people did ask uh, about that Carl Sagan clip in the last episode. It wasn't actually Carl Sagan. It was actually me. There's no copyright infringement. That's why I put a caption in the thing. It was actually me doing Carl Sagan. Because I love Carl Sagan. And it's one of the... It wasn't a very good impression, but it's one of the few impressions I can just about do. So I was quite touched that people thought it was actually Carl Sagan. I was like, cool. Anyway. Right. So exactly the same principle with this. This is the black colour. So we're going to get some on the brush. Now you can see here we've got two little sort of ticks in the side. They're not completely sealed off. But all we're going to do is go boop and fill it. 
like a nice steak. Now again, don't worry, it looks really blatantly obvious right now. That's because it's really blatantly obvious right now. Um, but that will fade a bit and it will go matte as well. That will fade slightly as it dries. We've got no more little ticks. Okay, I'm just going to blow on these for a second. Because when I turn this over, I don't want it all to run out. Because you're using such a thin liquid and you are using so little of it, it may run out, but that's not a problem. Uh, often, surface tension itself is enough to keep the stuff in place, wherever you put it. Now, sometimes you won't have panel lines, you just have edges, like here. There's no panel line down here, just an edge. So all you do is treat it like a panel line, touch it. You can see how it's. this is actually a bit more cooperative. It's running down the panel line a little bit. Now again, don't panic that it's going all over the place. That is absolutely fine. And this is, when it comes to weathering, this is one of the really fun times because this is no thought required and it literally takes moments. Now this little thing down the side here, when these two sides go together, it will look like a big fat panel line. So I can't do anything on that side, but what I can do is run it along this edge here. And I'm just touching it. You can brush it on if you want. The, the reason I'm touching it is because then I do get some little bits of paint where I've touched it to the, to the flat part. But if I just brush it down, I'm going to have to clean up that whole piece. With uh, just little brush marks here and there, I just need to clear up those little brush marks. And cleaning up is dead easy. It's just, you may as well do everything you can to minimise any cleanup you need to do. Touch that to that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so I was quite chuffed that people thought that was actually Carl Sagan. I was like, cool. Da, da, da. Although I have to pull a funny face when I do a Carl Sagan voice. How can I have to do a Carl Sagan face? I'm not very good at impressions. It's not very good, but I'm quite proud of it. The beauty of a living thing is not the atoms that go into it, but the way those atoms are put together. Actually, that was a bit rubbish because I didn't rehearse it. The clip you had in that video when I did the uh, apple pie one, that was like about the sixth take. So, yeah, I can't do it s straight away off the top of my head. I have to kind of do a few test readings. Um, just on the side while I'm doing this, if you've never watched it, uh, go and find, you'll find it on Daily Motion of the Places, go and find the full 13 episode, I think, original series of Cosmos on the on the internet. Carl Sagan's Cosmos, or Cosmos, uh, as you American cousins call it. It is just, it's, it's like, you know, 30 odd years old now, but it's still relevant. And it's still the most fantastic thing. Carl Sagan... He's just a living God. I mean, let's just put it that way. He's just an absolute living God. He could teach me anything. He could read a shopping list and it would be the most interesting thing you'd ever heard in your entire life. Or go onto YouTube and look up Pale Blue Dot. I mean, I'm assuming a lot of you know who Carl Sagan is. But, you know, some of my younger builders might not have a clue who Carl Sagan was. Look up Pale Blue Dot. And watch. The man is a genius, and he's a personal hero of mine. There you go, you learn something about me every day. So you can see I'm going around these little edges here. And again, don't worry if it's going everywhere. Billions and billions of paint splats. And that will suffice. I think everything else is actually covered up when it's put together, so. Right. Uh, right, we're going to leave this to dry. So that's those done. Looks messy as heck. That's fine. So we're going to leave these two parts to dry. Uh, and then in a moment, your time, or in about an hour my time, I will show you how to clean these up. I will also show you how to change the white balance. There you go. That's it. Uh, the blast and gefahrt and vid the white and the bright light and the not seeing and the burning in the retinas. That is nicht richtig. I'm having one of them days. So I'm going to clean my brush off. Right, I shall go and leave these to dry for a while. So about half an hour. Depends on how, if it's a panel line, it's probably about half an hour is fine. If it's something like these deep recesses or you put a load of the wash on, maybe leave it for an hour. Uh, one other thing I did do, and I didn't show you, which is kind of cool, and I'm really proud of, is the back of the V-fin. Uh, the little brown triangle shapes, or 
not triangles because they've got more than three sides. You moron! <laughs> Maths is hard. Uh, these little brown recessed areas. Wonderfully beautiful crisp straight lines on this girder structure. And all I did was fill those, those depressions in with the panel line wash. Let it dry for about two hours because it was quite thick. I really filled them to the top. Uh, and then just cleaned off the surface. So I might need to go back and do more because it does fade slightly and it pulls away from the edges because it's thin. But yeah, that's the kind of thing you can do with a panel line wash or just basically a thin uh, pin wash, which is what we're doing. It's basically, you probably heard the phrase pin wash. That's what it basically is. So you can use it to all kind of great effects, panel lines, recesses, things like that. Uh, so anyway, again, enough waffle. I seem to do that thing. I may do a lot of things badly, but one thing I really excel at is just I'm not shutting the crap up. Let's go and let these dry and we'll come back in a bit. Back in a moment. Oh, by the way, this actually took as long as it took to explain, so I was talking crap in that last section. Bye. <laughs> right, okay, it's had about 45 minutes to do its drying thing. So, how do you clean this up? Well, uh, I remembered I was going to show you how to clean up splodges and I forgot to do it here, so I did a couple of random splodges. Two ways to clean things up. Once everything's dried for about half an hour, 45 minutes, to clean up any edges, simply take your cotton bud, parallel to the surface, so don't dig in, you want to use the flat edge, and just... Done. It's a dry cotton bud. Uh, for most stubborn ones, it's not fully dry that bit, but you can just rub it off. Now it has left a stain, and if I try that one, that's just a mess. So how do I get rid of that? Well, that's even easier. Take your brush, take the clean thinner that you haven't used to clean your brush out, get the brush damp, don't get it soaking wet, just damp, dead easy, just do this, just clean it off. So I'm varying between my clean brush dip and my brush washing dip. Because it's enamel and it takes so long to dry, you can just brush it away and take your cotton bud and as if by magic there is nothing there there is no bathroom so there you go that's gone take another cotton bud for the panel line same again just keep your brush flat to the surface not sticky down because you don't want to get anything out of the panel line you just want to get it away from the edges where it overflowed just run it along and it cleans up beautifully and you're left with a really nicely filled panel line now because I put a load on this bit that's quite a dark panel line compared to the other leg which I put away now um, so the more you put on the darker and more obvious your panel line will be but that I'm fine with that for the red thing again same again keep it flat to the surface not poking in because you want to go over the top and not into the recess bit of that bit of that now for this bit, this little 90 degree corner, remember how it's not a panel, it's just an edge. Just get the cotton bud and run it along. It should get rid of anything that's overflowed out of the line. You might end up taking most of it off again, but you'll have a little essence of it left behind. On here, I'll just do... With this one, if I run it this way, it's going to take all of it out. So what I tend to do on edges like this is run it along like that so that I clean it off the outer edge, but I leave it in the corner between the top and the bottom part. Here, I'll just run along. And I'm running in the groove, as it were, like that. I'm not digging it in, unless I need to. I'm just running it along the groove. So you've got the corner here, and then you've got the cotton bud here, like that. So it leaves a little corner here where the stuff will hopefully stay in. So I'm just cleaning it from around because all little brush marks are taken off on the top and bottom. Now don't worry if you take off too much and it's suddenly clean and there's nothing there at all. No problem. Just go back and do it again. Put some more in. No, more on. More in. If you take off too much, just let it dry for a bit longer and go and put some more wash in. Let that dry and start again. No problem doing that at all. Here I'm going to have to go like that because I can't get the cotton bud in otherwise. And that is how complicated pin washes with enamels or oils actually are. That's it. That's as complicated as it gets. Now you do get water-based clay washes as well. 
um, chaps like uh, Ultimate Modeling Products Washes and Phil Flory's Flory Modeling. They do a load of clay washes. Uh, and they are really, really good. And I do use those. Uh, but for this, I'm going to use these because for these outside panel lines, I find that enamel and oils, enamels give the best panel line washes because they give a, a they can give you a nice solid colour, but where it does fade away, it's a nice smooth fade. Oil paint's a bit more grainy, so it'll be a bit more particle-y. I know it's not a real word, but you know what I mean. Uh, and clay washes, I do find quite grainy, so I'll, I'll use those in certain places, not others. Uh, but we're going to use a clay wash on the metallic inner frame parts because I can't use anything else on those because they're not sealed. So I will show you that later on in the build. So I'll go and uh, finish off all these little bits of... Uh, pin washings that needs to sit for 24 hours now because I need to let it dry uh, when we're doing enamel washing and enamel weathering of any kind the golden rule is do the level you need to do so the next bit will be using streaking grime for some little low lights and streaking patches do the thing you need to do like the next step or this step then leave it 24 hours and then go in with the next step after that the reason you do that is so that when I do the next step for example with streaking grime I'm going to put thinner all over here and I don't want the thinner to upset the paint that's already on there like in these panel line washes so if i give that 24 hours then it should be fairly able to resist when thinners go on the surface it may not but you always have to go back and touch it in so i'll leave that to dry for 24 hours and when we come back we will do some streaking of one sort or another